Islam, I greet you all with the greetings of the people of paradise. Jalim Allahu wa iyyakum min ulama amin. Salam Allahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. The khutbah by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in Arabic it would be La deena liman la ghayrata lah. There is no religion for the person who has no ghayr or protective jealousy. Or another online for it is What happened to the ghayr in men? What happened to the ghayr in us men? Brothers and sisters, لا يخفى على أحد منكم As obvious as it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us human beings with certain human instincts within us. They are embedded. This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. As the Prophet alayhi salam, he talks about how someone is born a Muslim, acknowledging that there's one God, one deity worthy of worshiping. Naam. But it is his or her parents that turn that person, that believer, that muwahid into either a Jew or a Christian. So this is something that is embedded within us as human beings generally, but specifically more here with the concept of rujula and the concept of having a protective jealousy. Now what's, what's obvious to point out is that today in our society it's portrayed, and I'm sure a lot of you heard this before, that is that when a man, you talk about having a sense of a protective jealousy or just the inclination, the idea of having jealousy for your wife, the contemporary society points at you and says, oh, are you insecure? Well, you have confidence issues. Oh, you don't trust your wife and so on and so forth, right? This is at least how contemporarily speaking, this is how it's viewed. We as Muslims, we believe that no, there's a place and time for us to exercise that protective jealousy and to feel that feeling in your heart, whether it's good or whether it's disgust for that which you are uh, seeing in front of you. Now, as for the asbab, as to why the ghayra is in a perpetual state of decline, why it's decreasing first within the men and then of course within a lot of our youth and youngsters, first off it's because we are constantly having to cater to the contemporary society, to the societal expectations and sensibilities. And of course, I think it goes without showing, all of you already know exactly what it is I'm talking about. I'm talking about having us Muslims constantly having to live up to the egalitarian expectations, or in another more blunt term, living up to the expectations of feminism. And that is that women are in a time right now where they can do whatever they want, however they want, with whomever they want. And the society expects of us men to look from afar, to admire our women and allow them to do what they want, however they want. Thinking that, that was the prophetic way of the Prophet Wallahi, He was not that man. The Prophet والسلام, we have to make a distinction. Naam, he would more likely than not say yes when someone is demanding or asking something of him. He would say, Naam, wala la sahih. However, this does not mean by any sense of the imagination that the Prophet والسلام, was a yes man. Meaning that whatever his wives did, that he would just say there, Naam, yes, of course. So having to live up to this societal expectation, more and more men are willing to give in and stand from the sidelines as their wife does what she wants, however she wants, and the only thing a miskeen can do is to sit on the sideline as she does whatever she pleases. And when you ask him, he tells you, Akhi, who am I to judge her? I trust her. Anta mas'oolun anha yawm al You will be, what do you mean who are you to judge? You will be asked about her and she's not going to be asked about you. What do you think? Qawama just comes like that out of nowhere? The Qiwama comes with a price. It's a responsibility. So one of the reasons is we Muslims always having to live up to the contemporary societal expectations. The dominant culture. This is the society. Unfortunately, this is the time we're living in. Right? So that's one. Number two, now, is the inferiority complex that some of us, if not many of us, men have. And that is that the man doesn't have a sense of vision in his life. 
ولا يريد أن يشار إليه بالبنان على أنه مختلف من أولئك الآخرين. He does not want to be pointed at as being different. يخاف جبان خواب. Unfortunately, he's afraid. Right? There's there's this khawab. He's afraid of being different. His friends are doing something, and he wants to do like them. Right? He he doesn't want to be different. He's afraid of that. Deep inside, he's afraid. He he cannot move forward. Right? So long as it means him uh, uh, being uh, uh, different. So the inferiority complex, especially within our younger generation, for our younger brothers in high school and college, there's this concept of always wanting to fit in. I don't want to be different. I just want to be like my colleagues. I want to be uh, uh, accepted, peer pressure, and so on and so forth. So what ends up happening is a lot of the younger generation, right? <clears throat> the inferiority complex does not allow him to exercise his individuality. He just wants to. غايته في الحياة غرضه في الحياة is to be like everyone else. He just wants to be like everyone else, right? And this emanates, of course, from an inferiority complex. أي قلة الغيرة is because of an inferior complex or lack of confidence. When you lack confidence, this is what's going to happen. Another reason, as well, brothers and sisters, is these topics are not savory topics. Al-Ghayra, Al-Ghayra, you will never go to a national convention here in North America and you're going to hear a khatib, an imam, a shaykh, a da'i, an ustad speak about men's protective jealousy or the way men can exercise their jealousy with their women folk. Do you know why? Because it's not politically correct to speak about it. However, and I'm sure a lot of you heard this before, but forgive me for being repetitive. You will hear a lot about women's rights in these national conventions. And how the Prophet was good to his wives. He was an amazing husband, but never any accountability towards the women. Never any constructive criticism towards women. And I see heads doing this. I know, because I've been following this for a decade now. The only videos that you're going to find going viral is a sister shouting at the top of her lungs about how we should honor and respect women. Do I have a problem with that? No, I do not. But I do have a problem with the selectivity where not once would you guys have time to address women and perhaps remind them that her way to hell could possibly be because of her rebellion against her own husband. Not me. Don't be mad at me. Don't have, don't have any heart on with me. Okay, this is what the Prophet ﷺ says, this is what our religion teaches. Don't, don't, don't have a fit on with me like I'm the problem here. I'm nothing but a conveyor, not a conveyor belt. I'm conveying a message. Okay, now, the Prophet ﷺ was the Prophet ﷺ was the best of character. And he still had ghayrah. You have an ghayrah. And the younger generation, they're confused. Right? Because they're not hearing enough of this dialogue on the manabir. We have to reinstitute and renormalize these conversations to absolve a lot of the confusion that's found within our younger generation. Because the younger generation, the more they lend their ears to what's out there, and they have no one here to rebuttal a lot of that nonsense out there, that is only going to add more confusion to the confusion that they already have. Ya Layt al-Shi'ri, those people who say, Ya Shaykh, it's not of hikmah to talk about this. Kullun nasi ajma'oon, the whole world is talking about it. But the Muslim imams and mashayikh and du'as are not to talk about it. Hadha khuzlan, Allah, this is not hikmah. We have to leave political correctness outside the masjid. We in Islam believe in hikmah, not political correctness. Our younger generation are thirsty. They are thirsty, ya nas. They are thirsty for people to be upright, direct, and candid with them. And to tell them, a spade is a spade. The Prophet ﷺ walked in on his own wife Aisha ﷺ, And he found someone there with her who he himself was not familiar with, he did not know. And immediately, Aisha ﷺ said, Aisha ﷺ said, as soon as the Messenger of Allah walked in, I could see malami hawajhi, I could see his face, the ghabab, the anger in his face. And then Aisha hurried and she explained, she says, Ya Rasulullah, innahu akhi min al-rabah. 
O Messenger of Allah, he's my brother from suckling. In other words, from wet nursing, he's my brother. And the Prophet ﷺ was not aware of this. But no, as soon as he saw her, his face changed. He was angry. Does that mean that the Prophet ﷺ had an inferiority complex? He was insecure. No, it, it means being a normal human being and a normal husband and a normal man. Another aspect in, in quality of his ghayra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is when Umm Salama and Umm uh, um Salama and another Maymuna radiallahu anhum, they were both with the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. Ibn Umm Maktoum walks in, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says that both of them tahajjaba minhum, ihtajiba minhum, wear your hijab from him. They said, Ya Rasulullah, ayu busiruna, alaysa bi amya, alaysa bi a'ma, ayu busiruna. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, when he said that, they rebuttaled and they said, O Messenger of Allah, how can he see us? Is he not blind? The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, qal, awa amya wali antuma, are both of you blind? Don't you see him? Right? A difference, a difference. Some of you are not used to this, because the only thing we hear about the Messenger of Allah is how he's walking around smiling to everybody and patting everybody on the shoulder and giving them glad tidings in paradise and la 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 la. No, real is real. The Prophet ﷺ is like that. He says, He didn't say, What a great, remarkable question both of you are asking. MashaAllah. La 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 la. Please. We had enough of that. Enough of that. Sa'imna yana. Sa'imna wallah. We're starting to portray Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the way the Christians portray Jesus Alayhi Salaam. And we all know that was not the historical Jesus, right? Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam. The Prophet Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam, he says, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْدُّخُولَ عَلَى النِّسَى Do not go into the gatherings of women, O men. Someone raised in his hand and he says, O Messenger of Allah, حَتَّى الْحَمُوا Even the brother-in-law, the Prophet Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam, he says, الْحَمُوا الْمَوْتِ the brother-in-law is death. A sister, she's out now with her husband. She's out with her brother-in-law to get a gift for her own husband. Then what do we do with the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? He says, لا يحلونا رجل بالمرأة إلا والشيطان فلكهما يا ناس And then we add the Prophet ﷺ. He says that a man should not go alone with a woman. Only that shaitan is the third of the two. It's not about you. It's not about trusting you. The shaitan is present. The shaitan is there, and you as a man should have a problem with that. Nah, you don't even come to my house when I'm not there. Let alone take my wife and go, nah, I don't need your gift. But the problem when this becomes normalized, and no one addresses it, this is when it becomes normalized. When no one talks about it, this is how it becomes normalized. One of the Sahaba, one of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, kana haditha ahdin biros. He recently got married. And subhanAllah, out of his jealousy, he came back to his house. He sees his wife right in front of the doorsteps. She's not bouncing around from mall to mall all day. She's not bouncing around from friend to friend. She ain't just walking around like she's got nothing to do. Just The Prophet He sees a asr, he sees a palace in paradise. And then he sees a jariyah, he sees a woman who's making wudu. He asks, the Malaika Jibreel, who is this palace for? The angel says, هَذَا الْقَصْرُ لِعُمَرْ حَشَرَنَ اللَّهُ مَعَهُمْ اللَّهُ مَعَهُمْ He says, this palace is for Umar. The Prophet والسلام, he says, تَذَكَّرْتُ Later on, when he's saying this story to Umar, he's sharing this story in his vision with Umar رضي الله عنه. He says, oh Umar, لَمَّا تَذَكَّرْتُ غَيْرَتَكْ وَلَّيْتُ أَدْبَرْتُ Oh Allah, when I remembered your jealousy, your protective jealousy that you have for your women folk, I turned around and I didn't even bother asking anything else. Did the Prophet tell him, by the way, I just want to let you know, Umar, you're exaggerating a bit. You're a little bit too qayyur. No. It's praiseworthy. He's telling him, I remembered your jealousy, so I just kept that walking. Right? I just went the other direction. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this story. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu says, Wallahi, lo wajadtu rajulan ma mra'ati, la barabtu ra'sahu, la barabtu ra'sahu, bisaydi ghayra musrih. He says, Wallahi, O Messenger of Allah, if I were to see a man with my wife, with my wife, meaning seriously with my wife, right? I would have killed him. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, Ata'ajabuna min ghayrati sa'ad, are all of you mesmerized, puzzled by the protective jealousy that Sa'ad has for his wife? 
Listen, لا أنا أغير منه. I am more jealous than sad. والله أغير مني. And Allah is more jealous than me. Right? He doesn't say, whoa, 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 whoa. You gotta really fix yourself there, buddy. He doesn't say that. عليه الصلاة والسلام. Right? He praises him, but he's instructing him that that's not the, that's not the correct way to go about it. But your your غيرة is praiseworthy to have that kind of uh, uh, غيرة. It's praiseworthy to have that غيرة. Also, we find of the غيرة of the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم غيرة الزبير. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he was on his way with his companions one day, and he saw Asma, the wife of Zubair al Awam رضي الله عنه. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام أنا خل هالبعير وقال لها ركبي. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he stops, he pulls down the camel. And he says, oh, Asma, will you not ride? Asma, and this is for our women folk. Please, if you have room alongside of you, uh, to, to, just try to pull a front, come forward, just so we can allow room for some of the brothers in the back. Barakallahu alaykum, please. Um, so, Asma, radiyallahu anha, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, offers her a ride. He says, it can be, right? Well, will you not ride with us? The only thing Asma said is, تَذَكَّرْتُ غَيْرَةَ الزُّبَيْرِ فَمْتَنَاتِ I remembered my husband's jealousy, so I stopped. Now, is this an average joke? No. This is with the Messenger of Allah. And that's why you as a man, you have to have a sense of direction. You as a man, you have to have a sense of how you're going to direct your household. Not copycat your friends. Well, I, my friends, this is how he does with his wife. No, no, no. This is when your wife starts looking down on you, when she sees that you are void of any leadership qualities. And the way you're running the family is based on Fulan and Alan. Well, like, look, let's, let's, let's model the way they live, right? You have to have your own sense of direction. And there's nothing women appreciate and love in a man like confidence. Right? So with Zubair radiallahu anh, now the Prophet وسلم, did he badger her? Right? Because this you find this, right? You don't want your wife going with certain people and the auntie jumps in, the uncle, he's not gonna eat your wife, don't worry about it. How can I You're like, no, I don't want my wife going with her cousin. She'll wait for me, I'll come home in an hour or two, I will take her. Right? Now, the Prophet he doesn't say, Oh Asma, do you doubt me? Does does a Zubay, do you think he's gonna get angry with me? I am the purest of hearts, I am the best man alive. Or does the Prophet ﷺ respect her decision and respect the jealousy that she has for her husband and just keeps going? That's what he does, sallallahu alayhi wa He doesn't sit there and tries to convince her how she ought to drive and go and uh, uh, ride with him, alayhi salatu wa salam, right? And this is a sign for married women as well. Respect your husband's jealousy and do not undermine it. Do not undermine your husband's jealousy if there are women listening out there. The point in case here, brothers and sisters, is that that fitrah, that feeling that you feel, is normal, and it's not even normal. It's praiseworthy. And anyone telling you otherwise is sick. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب الأولين والآخرين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام وكلكم يحفظ هذا الحديث. كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته. All of you are shepherds speaking to the men, and all of you will be held responsible on Judgment Day for your flock, your wife included, your daughters, your kids included, and those under. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام mentions another hadith about three people who will not go to Jannah. Three people. The person who's disobedient to his or her parents. Right? I heard about a story yesterday of a sister telling her father when her father You raised your daughter for 15, 20 years and then she comes at you and tells you, who are you to tell me what to do? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. What a slap in the face. How a man leaves in the wee hours of the morning, working, giving his all for his daughter to come in her mid-teens and look at her father in the eye and say, who are you to tell me what to do? <laughs> 
Three, those who are disobedient to their parents. Number two, women who act like men. And the third is that the youth. That the youth, the ulama said, is a person who is allowed with his wife cheating on him. And the ulama said, by extension, is a man who sees his wife mutabarisha, who allows his wife to leave shamelessly out of her home, wearing tight pants, leaving with perfume. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the woman who leaves with perfume is a zaniya. Hmm? That's your job as the husband to put a stop to that. That's your job. That's your job to put a stop to that, not to allow that. Now, if she's Mrs. Independent and she can leave on her own any minute and she really never cared about what you had to say. But you feel in your heart that you're against it. For there's a difference between a man who just doesn't care what you bad and a man who knows his wife is leaving like that, beautifying, dazzling herself up for the whole world to see and he don't care. He ain't tripping, he's good. This is one of the manifestations of being in the youth that the Prophet don't be, don't be mad at me. Right? Your parents should have taught you this. If you're mad at me right now, your parents should have taught you this. This should be normal. This should be normal, right? So allowing your woman to leave with clothes that's displaying the shape of her body, right? Showing everything. That's how. Your wife dazzling her face up with so much makeup, the eyelashes, the, 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 the fluffy lips and the lipstick and the shine and all that. Who is she doing that for? I'm just, who is she doing that for? Is she not supposed to do that for you and you only? Who is she doing that for? And why are you okay with that? Hmm? Why? Another manifestation of diyat that is allowing our women to run wild online. Haddith wala haraj. Haddith wala haraj. And it surprises me how some men are allowed to sleep at night with his daughter looking the way she is on her profile picture online. The duck pose, the pounds of makeup, the squinch. Wallahi, some pictures you would think that it's out of a porn magazine. Wallahi. Huh? And of course, the Muslim names, Khadija, Umar, Man, Umar, Abdullah, I mean, Muslim names, right? We're in hijab and, and she looks at you like this. As a parent, you see that, you don't say a word. Wallahi, we have no idea what we are playing with. The fire that we're playing with. But it's become normalized because we don't talk about it. And then a woman wants to compare, well, why does my brother? Because your brother's not a fitna like you are. That's why. Your mother back home or your grandmother who can't read or write, she understands why a woman should not be beautifying herself online. But you, with all your degrees in your career, that doesn't make sense to you. Right? Isma'u ya rijal, ala lakum salahatan. Ittaqullah fi Put an end to this. Because if that goes on, and Allah asks you on Yom al there's not a man who comes across these profile pictures, and he's enticed, only that you as a man bear a part of that burden on Yom al Listen to that, this is not my ishtihad. This is not my ishtihad. We have to put an end to this nonsense. We have to put an end to this nonsense, ya nas. La ilaha illallah. We go online, we go to a wedding, a woman is dancing in the middle of men, and the Facebook's live and everybody's seeing it. Why is that okay? Why is that normal? Huh? Wallahi, nahnu ummatun fi amas al hajati ila umar radiallahu anhu. La ila al hiwa. Nahnu ummatun fi amas al haja ila umar wa amthalihi radiallahu. La ila al hiwa wa al qiwa qal ta'ala wa akna'ni wa akna'ni. La wallah. I mean, wallah, I, I really believe that. We're, we're beyond, we're, 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 we're so, we're so, yeah, if all gets, right? La ilaha illallah. Men's biggest weakness is women. Our biggest weakness as men is women. And this is something that we're not ashamed, we're not embarrassed of. 
This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is how Allah created us And for you young men out there in your MSAs talking about Oh I'm not like these other guys, I don't think about these things Bruh, I can tell you, she's not going to look for you in marriage, trust me You're trying to gain brownie points and look like you're this so generous And you don't, you're, you don't think like that, your mind is not in the gutter She's not looking for you in marriage, give it a rest Right? This is the way Allah created men the first thing that Allah mentions in Surah Ali Imran Be beautified for men is the desires of women Right? So we as men, we fall weak to that We fall weak to that That's our greatest weakness And that's why women have to do their part We lower from our gaze But that doesn't mean you walk around looking scandalous like that in front of everybody and anybody A'udhu Billah One last thing, I mean, two things inshallah ta'ala, but quickly. Brothers, if it's a darura, للضرورات, للضرورات You should not allow random men coming in your house in your absence. First, if it's something that needs fixing, you do not have some random, and I know this is gonna sound very odd to some of you. If it is something that can wait, if it is something that can be delayed, then make sure you're home with your wife. Don't have, some, don't have some random carpenter, random plumber, random whoever in your house. If it is something that can be delayed, we have the light. Okay? It's not about not trusting your wife. You know nothing about this guy coming in your house. Our houses are sacred. Right? Unless it's something that can be delayed. One last thing for the parents, inshallah ta'ala. Teach your kids these concepts. Find time for your kids. The three, four hours that we spend on Jazeera, at the coffee shops, talking about mundane things at Jama'at al khir we can spend a lot of this time educating our children about the very basics of how men are and how Allah created them, and how women are and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. Let us spend more time with our children. We're losing our children. We're losing them. Women are becoming men, men are becoming women, and then we wonder why the divorce rates are at the rate they are right now. Right? It's not about education, it's about the fitra is lost. Our fitra is, is it's damaged, right? Allahumma la ilaha illa anta ya hayu ya qayyum. Allahumma thibbidna ala ta'atik wa ala dinik. Allahumma alif bayna kulubina. Allahumma rizukna al-hikmat ya hakim. اللهم ارزقنا الحكمة يا حكيم اللهم ثبت شبابنا اللهم ثبت شبابنا اللهم رد الأمة الإسلامية إلى طريقك ردا جميلا اللهم وفقنا لما يرضيك هذا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ولا إله إلا أنت والله أدرى وأعلم